All right, guys, we are back. So I inquired about the issue of copying and pasting. It, for some reason, doesn't let us paste text by going to edit and paste. Um, this is an issue in Photopea. I did bring it up. I basically reported a bug, so hopefully they can fix it. But we can use the alternative way of doing it, which is just the shortcut of Command or Control V. So if you are using a Chromebook to paste your text, you would use Control V when you're in the text tool. So I am just gonna do that part one more time in case anyone was confused. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this entire text layer. So I'm just gonna hit delete on that. If you already did it, then you're totally fine and you can kind of zone out during this part. But I'm gonna go back to my text and I'm gonna go to edit, copy, and on photo P, one more time, I'm gonna use the text tool, which is the T in the toolbar. And I'm gonna click and drag a rectangle around the figure. So the issue is that we can't go to edit and paste, but the shortcut again does work. So instead of going to edit paste, what you wanna do is just hit control V if you are on a Chromebook and command V if you are on a Mac. Again, that's V as in Victor. So you can see once I do hit Command V in my case because I'm using a Mac, it will go ahead and paste all of your text as it's supposed to. So now I'm gonna select all of the text. The easiest way of selecting all of your text at the same time is hitting Control A if you're on a Chromebook or a PC and Command A if you're on a Mac. That shortcut is just called Select All, like so. So you'll know that your text is selected because it does this little negative um, and it turns everything white and blocky. And now what I wanna do is I wanna play around with a few things. I'm gonna play around with the font, the font size, and something called letting and tracking, which I will show you in a minute. First, I'm gonna go ahead and play around with my font style. I'm gonna do that by clicking on the default font that it applied called Deja Vu Sans. So I'm gonna click on the little drop down menu. And if you just scroll up, you'll see that Photo P is preloaded with a lot of different fonts that you can freely choose from. If I just continue scrolling down, I wanna find maybe a nice, creepy, eerie looking font to use. So I went ahead and found another one. It's called Gesso or Gesso. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Um, and it's kind of this really grungy looking font that I think suits the image pretty well. And what we're gonna do now is we are going to apply what's called a clipping mask so I can start to see what this is gonna look like as an end result. So I'm gonna go back to my move tool and we are going to make a brand new layer. So I'm gonna click the new layer button that's the little sticky note with a fold on it. And we're gonna fill this layer with black completely. So this is gonna be our new background layer. I'm gonna to go to edit and then fill. And instead of foreground, I'm gonna go ahead and select black as my fill color and then press okay. So that covered everything up just because this layer is all the way on top. I'm gonna just click and drag it down. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename a few of my layers. So instead of background, this one is going to be called girl. And then this one is gonna be called background. I don't really have to name the text. I can just leave that as a default. We know that it is a text layer because it has this little T preview on the left side of it. Now to apply our clipping mask, what we're gonna do is move this girl layer on top of the text layer. So I'm just going to click and drag it and put it all the way on top like so, so it covers everything up. And then you are going to either right click on the girl layer and go to clipping mask. And the second way of doing it, if you're unable to right click, is make sure you're on the girl layer and clicked on it and then just go to layer and then clipping mask here. And you'll see that it basically applied the image on top of the text 
and ignored everything else except the text. This is a really neat effect that you can do with the clipping mask with multiple images and you can get really creative with it. Now I think I want to edit this text because I'm not really seeing this figure of the girl too well. It kind of looks a little bit blurry. So I want to bring the text closer together and I want to make the text a little bit smaller. The readability isn't too big of an issue here. Um, it's okay if it's not that easy to read. So I'm going to go back and edit the text. To do so, I just have to double click on this little T for the text layer. And you can see that what it did is selected all of my text at once. So I don't have to worry about selecting it again. If I had to and I accidentally deselected, I could just hit, in my case, Command A, and if you're using a Chromebook, Control A. And I can just reselect all of my text again. So now we're gonna play around with the text we have. We're gonna play around with the size and then what's called letting and tracking. To do so, I'm gonna to go to Window and then Character to open up this Character panel right here. And you can see we have Size, Tracking, and Letting. And I wanna show you guys what this does before I show you how we're gonna use it. So if I click on this little drop-down menu for Size and I start playing around with this and adjusting it, you can see it's a little bit laggy. Obviously, the size is gonna make your text either larger or smaller. I'm going to set it back to about 20 for myself and press enter. And what tracking does on the other hand, tracking is the space between each of your letters. So if I click on this little drop down menu for tracking and I increase the number, You'll see that my text gets really, really spaced out depending on my tracking percentage. This is really, really high tracking, so my letters are very far apart. Um, I probably don't want to set it up this high. In fact, I think I want to bring my letters closer together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a number. I'm going to type in a negative 50 because I want to bring my letters closer together. So this would be a negative number instead. And I think that this is pretty good. It's not too close together where they're like overlapping or anything, but close enough to where I'll be able to see the figure a little bit more. So I'm happy with my negative 50%, but you might want to play around with it and see what other options there are. I am going to take a quick moment and close this character panel by just clicking on this CHA button. And I'm going to save what I have so far. It looks like PhotoP is taking a little while to load things. So that's sometimes a sign that it might crash. So what I want to do is in the middle of it, just go to file and then save as PSD to just make sure I don't lose any of my progress so far. Now I'm going to go back to my text layer again. I deselected it when I went to save. So I'm going to double click on that T. And I might have done something wrong over here because it looks like there's some text missing. So what I will do is I'm going to disable this girl layer really quickly just by pressing the eyeball. Yeah, and it looks like what happened is I forgot to backspace from this sentence. So I'm going to double click the T again. This is a common issue. It might happen to you. And I'm just going to go right in front of this letter. I'm going to hit my backspace and spacebar to bring it back up. And then I can just click on that eyeball for the girl layer again to bring it up. And that already looks a lot better as I'm observing it. Now the only thing that's really bothering me is the spacing between my lines. I have these really obvious black spaces or lines between my text. This is what's called letting in graphic design and in typography. So I'm going to adjust my letting and make it smaller. In order to do that, I'm going to double click on this T again so I can select my text. And you do want to be patient with it. Sometimes it takes a second. 
Then I'm going to open up that character panel one more time by clicking on the CHA. And if you don't see it here, you can also access it by going to Window and then Character. And by default, my letting is set to auto, depending on the size of my text. We want to make our own letting, so we want to unclick auto. Once I do that, all of my text is going to jump all the way on top because my sentences are going to be right on top of each other since my letting is going to be set to zero. So don't be afraid or freak out if that happens. It's a very easy fix. So I'm going to uncheck auto. And you're going to see all of my text just jumped to the very top of my paragraph and basically stacked on top of itself. It's actually really hard to see. It looks like it went off of the picture. But don't worry, it's all selected. You just don't click anything else after you uncheck auto. We are going to set the letting up. So I'm going to click this little drop down menu and I'm going to click and drag this bar up. Just a little hint, by the way. Um, letting all depends on the size of your text. So if mine is set to 20 pixels, I want my letting to be around 20, probably a little bit lower so I can cram that text in and really have it pushed together. So mine set at 18 pixels looks pretty good. It looks like my line spacing got a lot tighter, which is nice. So I'm gonna click away from character and I'm gonna just go to my move tool really quickly to deselect my text just so I can see what it looks like. So I'm gonna click my move tool. That looks way better. And I'm gonna zoom out. You can definitely tell that this is a ghostly figure, I think. Um, you can definitely tell that it's a girl as well. One last thing that I wanna note is it's okay if your text looks pixelated like this. The reason it looks pixelated is because this is set to postcard size, which is four inches by six inches. That's about the size of a standard photo. So it's supposed to be a small image. Um, and in that sense, really it would look about this big, maybe a bit smaller. You wanna keep that in mind, especially if you wanna get this printed for yourself, which you totally can do. But that is essentially the end of this project. I want you guys to really get into this, play around with the different font options that you have, and maybe you want to use text that you've written yourself instead of a pre-written poem that I chose, like I chose Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, but maybe you want to pick lyrics to your favorite song or something like that. Maybe you want to choose a different text, and again, maybe you want to choose your own image and play around with it that way. So that's the end of the Halloween postcard project. I really hope you guys liked it. And feel free to get as creative as you want. If you want to add more text on it like to and from or happy Halloween or something creepy, you can totally do that. It is up to you and you can get as crazy as you want with it. I will see you guys on the next project.